Well, here now is Carol Markowitz, New York Post columnist. Carol, great to see you. I want to get your take on President Biden on all these tests. Listen to yeah. what he's been saying throughout the year on the availability of COVID tests. Take a listen. We continue to work on making at-home testing available. We're going to deploy things like testing to expand detection of the virus. We're committing $2 billion to purchase nearly 300 million rapid tests so that every American, no matter their income, can access free and convenient tests. Carol, the president has a real problem in the polls when it comes to his competency yeah. ratings. I think it's stuff like this that probably causes that. You're probably right. Uh, one of the clips that you didn't show was Jen Psaki, uh, the press secretary, earlier this month saying, what are we supposed to do, send every American an at-home test? And her sarcasm and her just general uh, tone when she's asked about any of the questions that go on within the administration uh, is really telling. And so, um, you know, a few weeks ago, when the, the virus was really hitting uh, red states, Jen Psaki thought it was ridiculous to send every American an at-home test. Now that, of mm. course, it's hitting the Northeast, the, the Biden administration is finally, finally on it. But absolutely, this kind of incompetence and this kind of delay of action has really been a hallmark of this administration. It's the, the administration and the president talks and talks and talks about issues like testing or the supply chain crisis or inflation, yeah. but the words never seem to have any actions associated with them, Carol. I think that's the problem people have right now. Look, just do something. Stop talking about it. Do something. The president apparently seems incapable of doing that. That's absolutely right. And when he was running for president. Uh, you know, at the time, candidate Biden said that he was going to shut down the virus. And last summer, when the virus again was hitting southern states like Florida, he told governors to get out of the way. But today, he admits that there mm. is no federal solution to COVID, which I think all of us knew all along. But for some reason, Biden got to pretend that that wasn't the case. So, you know, the buck stops with him. It's absolutely his responsibility at this point to get tests into the hands of people. But it's also his responsibility to convey to Americans that COVID is endemic. It is going to be part of our lives going forward. And yes, it is the governor's responsibility of individual states to deal with the problem. And the president actually can't shut down the virus. So, Carol, was this, I'm glad you brought up that statement that he made today, basically saying this is the state's job. It's not the federal government's job to figure this out. Is that an about face? Has he changed his approach or did he just make a comment that he really didn't understand the significance of? No, absolutely. It's a change of approach. Again, this COVID is seasonal and it's going to hit different states at different times. When it was hitting southern red states, it became something that, you know, the governor could easily control. The idea that governors can stop COVID or can do certain uh, measures that would stop COVID completely and stop case numbers was ridiculous. And he should be called on it now because now that he accepts that that's a ridiculous premise, um, you know, now that these the, these COVID numbers are really astronomical and blue states. So I, I absolutely think it's a change of policy. I think that they've accepted that you can't actually stop COVID cases. You couldn't stop them in Florida and other red states in the summer. You can't stop them in the Northeast now. It's something that we have to really adjust to and accept that this is going to be part of our lives going forward. And the president should speak to that. So, Carol, do you think the president is going to back off on some of these vaccine mandates that he's been pushing that have been caught up in the courts? There's a ton of uncertainty hanging over businesses right now. Is it your view that he's going to back away from that because he really is changing his policy position here? Well, I do think he's going to have to back away from it. I don't know that it's going to be willingly, um, I, I, but I do think that the courts are not going to side in his favor. That's just my my take on this. Um, I also just don't think these mandates work. Look at New York City. We're having you know record-setting case numbers every day, and we have some of the tightest mandates in the country. The mandates are simply not effective for a virus that spreads even among vaccinated people. I mean, I've said it a million times, but I'm vaccinated. I'm pro-vaccination, but we can't pretend that COVID ends when you get get vaccinated. It simply doesn't. It's, it's a virus that will spread even among the vaccinated population. And the mandates make no sense for that reason. People should protect themselves if they can. But that's that, that's about where the vaccination conversation should end. Carol, you're talking about a policy shift here. I hope you're right. I like your optimism on the issue. Carol Markowitz, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.